So I want you to write these numbers down. Write down 63. Just kind of in a, in a row, if you would. Just kind of down like this. Write down 63. Write down 189. Write down 1890. Write down 315 twice. 315 and then 315. And then write down 13. And then write down 32. 63, 189, 1890, 315, 315, 13, and 32. Anyone know what those numbers represent? Days, days, yeah, in what? Days in the quarter, okay, close, okay. So next to, to the right of the number, write down, on the first 63, write down days worked. That's how many days we had that we could work in the first quarter. Typically there's 62, why are there, were there 63 this year? Leap year. Leap year. And everyone had an opportunity to make money one more day this year. Wasn't that exciting? <laughs> one more, some more phone calls, some more follow-up calls. So we had 63 work days. Right below it, three hours of prospecting per day gives you 189 hours of prospecting. Most of you shoulda, coulda prospected. The next one is 315, excuse me, 1890. That's 10, on average, 10 contacts per hour. You would have been able to contact 1890 people. You guys with me so far? This is in the first quarter. These are numbers that were possible. If you would have prospected three, excuse me, five houses a day, five days a week for the 63 work days, you would have gone and previewed 315 houses in the first quarter. If you would have door knocked five expireds a day, five days a week, you would have gone to 315 expired doors. You had the opportunity for 13 blitz days and based on some role play time, half an hour a day, you would have had approximately 32 hours of role play you could have done at a half an hour a week, okay? Everybody with me? So, if you did these activities over a period of three months, if you did those activities over a period of three months, what production w would be possible? What, what would be possible? Give me a guesstimate. Nobody wants a guess, huh? <laughs> Two transactions a month, okay, six over the last quarter. Four a month, okay. Four a month, possibly. One a month, four a month, something in that neighborhood. That's what was possible. So how many here did those numbers? Okay. Why not? Don't answer. <laughs> Because here's, here's what we're going to hear. After the fifth person shares the reason they didn't do this, it would get boring, wouldn't it? Because my kids got in the way, my dog ate, got in the way, my dog ate my calendar, so now I didn't know where I was supposed to be. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I hear this from time to time where agents actually... This is really weird. Do you know that agents actually come up to me after they've been with the company for three to six months, they've been through all the daily training, they've been through all of the coaching training, they've been through blitz after blitz after blitz, and they say to me, I don't know what to do today. 
It's true. They, I don't know if they zone out. I, I don't know if they zone out. I don't know. Maybe an alien comes and picks you up for the day. I don't know. And not you personally, but, Why not? but maybe. So I want you guys to listen to this. No one in our company, no one, no one, does 100% of what they're supposed to do 100% of the time. No one. Put that away. Okay? But we do have agents that do a lot of what they're supposed to do a lot of the time. You guys with me? The scripts, the dialogues, the tonality, all of that. Write down the number 69. 69 represents 28% of the agents in our company who in the first quarter made more money in the first quarter of 2016 than they made in the first quarter of 2015. And arguably, you see all the things that are coming out of the newspaper, is that there's a little less business in the first quarter of this year than there was in the first quarter of last year. You guys starting to see those numbers come out? Just came out again for, uh, for February this year. There's a little less business this year than there was last year. Now, not dramatically. We've been talking about that. This is somewhere around 6 7% in terms of number of transactions. Not catastrophic, but a little bit less. And we see, as we talked about in the last few weeks, that there are more agents eating on the same number of transactions. So that means the pie is slightly smaller. You guys with me? And there's more people eating on the same pie year over year. So in our company, 69 agents made more money year over year. Now some only made a few thousand dollars, four, five, six thousand dollars more this year over last year. But we had half a dozen agents earn in excess of $150,000 difference in the first three months than, than last year. And by the way, there's still four days left Still four days left to the year. That means that we have the closings, whatever people close, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, to add to those numbers. Interesting, right? Fascinating. So when you talk to these agents, you'll find that these people did a little bit more this year than they did last year. And that in fact is the difference. So the numbers I shared with you are what's possible in terms of activities and what we need to be working on, okay? So, if you had done all those activities, how many good leads would you probably have? Write that down. How many good leads, if you had done the activities we're talking about, how many good leads would you have generated? Two leads, four leads, eight leads, 15. Today, we generated, as a group, 11. And the group is slightly smaller because for some reason people have, uh, what do they call that? Easter week. So, spring break. <laughs> spring break, thank you. Spring break, Easter week, spring break. So, there's a, so the last three weeks, a lot of agents have been with their kids, you know, because somehow they've divided America up into these, there's about three weeks that America goes on spring break. <coughs> Um, different school districts go at different times, so everyone isn't in Fort Lauderdale in one week. Okay, it's over three or four weeks, or Disneyland, or wherever we take our families. So, question it over the first quarter: How many good leads would you have had? Question two: How many more deals would I probably had if I have done more of those activities over the first quarter? How many more deals would I probably have? How much more money would I have closed and how many more pendings would I have had in the first quarter? And the fourth question I wrote down here, are these activities basic activities or extraordinary activities? Are they basic activities or extraordinary activities? What say you? Basic activities. Basic activities. Nothing extraordinary in any one of these, correct? Say yes. yes. Okay. So, I know you know this, but I'm going to remind you. And I do want you to write this down. Christmas is coming. 
<laughs> Christmas is coming. Now the last time I said Christmas is coming was around the first or second week of January when we talked about working on our business plans and setting those up and everybody wrote down their numbers and had their goals and excitement and enthusiasm. And now we have the beginning of the second quarter. Now in the beginning of the first quarter, most of you, most of the people I work with and talk to, were excited about the business and excited about the opportunities and promised me beyond a shadow of a doubt that they were going to do exactly what I lined out to do and they weren't going to waver at all. Don't stand up, you that did that, okay? But a lot of you do that. And I understand it and I appreciate it. But then what happens an hour later? What happens? Life gets in the way. Stuff happens. Kids need to go to the dentist. We don't feel 100%. We have to take our children, our, our, excuse me, our parents to uh, whatever we have to do. I mean, the, the baby boomers, the guys and gals in my age range are dealing with grandchildren, helping the family out, the kids out with the grandchildren, and we're dealing with our parents. It's a very interesting place to be right now as a baby boomer. You know, I, I don't have my parents anymore, but all of a sudden I got like a gaggle of grandchildren, you know? <laughs> you know, and that's just, all of a sudden, that's just what happens. So, I wrote down here, your success, your success starts with what you do today. Let's not worry about what we did or didn't do yesterday. Let's not worry about what we did or didn't do in the first quarter. Because I believe, I've seen it happen. I've helped coach it through. I've coached our coaches to help coach you through this, that there's still time to have a spectacular year this year. Still time. We have to identify it now. We have to look at it now. We have to talk about it now. And maybe it's uncomfortable right now. I get that. But wouldn't you rather be, be talking about that today, in the end of March, 1st of April than talking about it in November when you can't do anything about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. So, let, so if we're going if we're, if we're to do something about it, it's got to be done now. We have to take action now. So your success starts with what you do today. What changes will you make today? So let me help you with some ideas. You, you knew I was going to give you some ideas, right? Okay, so write these down. All the numbers I shared with you, ex with the exception of the days worked, are the exact same numbers you have in the second quarter as you do in the first quarter. Okay? But you don't have 63 work days, you only have 62 work days because we don't have a leap month. Okay? So we have basically 62 work days. 20-ish days per work month, uh, per, per month, correct. We have 189 hours of prospecting, assuming you're going to prospect three hours a day. You've got about 1,890 contacts that you can make. Now think about this. If you stood in front of Costco or Walmart or any one of those big box stores where there's lots of traffic in any given day, okay, and two, three, four, five hundred people are coming in and out of those stores on a given day, right? You guys with me on this? Yeah. Okay. So over, a, and, and let's say they, Costco allowed you to do this. I don't know if they will, but if they allowed you to do that and hand out your card, carry a little um, um, clipboard and get names and phone numbers of people coming in and out. And you talk to 1,890 people coming in and out of Costco over the next week. Because that's about how many people would come in and out of Costco in the next week. If you talk to 1,890 people, would you find some people who wanted to buy or sell a house now or in the very near future? Yes. You'd find that, right? So that's all I'm talking about. Is fun. Now, now, you don't have to stand in front of Costco and have them call the security on you. you. You don't have to do that, okay? We have another way, okay? It's called a 5-5-10. You can go, 
door knock the streets, and you get to pick the neighborhoods. At Costco, you don't know if you're going to be dealing in an expensive neighborhood or a less expensive neighborhood. You don't know if you're going to be talking to a, a, a somebody that's been in their home a long time or not been in their home a long time. So with the door knocking, this is something that you guys get to do. By the way, with the new apps that some of these title companies have, you can stand right in front of the house and you can tell on the app within a couple of months of the story on the person that owns that house. Whether they've had it for a long time or whether they've just recently bought it. Whether there's a mortgage refinance on it or not. Right there, you're out door knocking. You could have that information with those apps. Just talk to your title guy or title gal. I think they all have that kind of a thing. So you have that opportunity. It's right there. You know if you don't want to talk to people who are renting houses, you push your button. It's got the address of the house right in front of it. Boom. Oh, that's a tenant. You move to the next house. You don't want to talk to that person. If you don't want to. If you do, that's fine. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Totally could fo This business, we didn't have that. Think about the difference between when I started in the business 40 years ago and today. Let's just talk about rotary phones. <laughs> and you had to do that for seven numbers, right? Don't make a mistake. And if you made a mistake, you had to start all over again. I think all of you should work on rotary phones for a day. You'll have a totally new appreciation for what we had to deal with. But we had rotary phones. Today you have the dial phones. No, today you have Mojo. You don't even have to dial. Connect, 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 connect. It's fabulous. We didn't have that. You guys have that. Today you can stand in front of the house and you can tell who owns the house and did they refine it. It's amazing what you can do today. Amazing. <sighs> it's exhausting. <laughs> so I wrote down here, here's a little formula for success. Write this down. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about the importance of motivation, right? Hello? Yes. Absolutely. And we've talked about how important your goals are, and we've talked about your attitude, your approach, and expectations, and we've talked about your habits. Your habits, your good habits, and your not so good habits. Remember, just because you, you don't have a habit is a habit. Get it? Okay? So let me ask you a question. Do you want to do, you want to do more business this quarter than you did last quarter? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. And would you like to beat your competition along the way? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So the key to bringing this all, all together are two words. Write these down. Two words, hard work. <laughs> ah, don't want to do that. Hard work. Here's a question. Are you working hard enough? Don't answer, answer it to yourself. Are you working hard enough? How hard have you been working? Okay, if you don't know, ask me. I'd be more than glad to share that with you, okay? Here's a, here's a test, okay, if you want a test. Ask Mike Ferry to follow you around for the day. Or just vision Mike Ferry following you around for the day, okay? Don't even ask him. Just, if Mike followed you for the day, at the end of the day, would he high five you and say, whoa, great job, or would he, <laughs> or would he not? <laughs> How's that? Let's just leave it there. Would he say, whoa, that was amazing. That was phenomenal. Or would he say, that's kind of pathetic. What, what's going on here? Okay? What's going on here? So, let me write, so write down the benefits of hard work. Number one, hard work helps us to realize our potential. Hard work helps us to realize our potential. As our work begins to pay off, think about what I'm saying here. As our work begins to pay off, it stimulates us to increase our effort, right? You harder you work, you get some results, that excites you, you tend to work a little bit harder, a little bit longer. It helps us to see our potential and that 
gives success brings confidence. Confidence brings more success. Do you guys see that? Harder you work, the better you feel, the better you feel, the more successful you become. Number two, hard work helps us to face up to life. Truth is, life can be hard, okay? Can. Life can be hard. We're challenged every day. We're challenged every day between whimpering about the things that are happening to us or standing up to the things that life throws at us. We do, okay? Including me. There are days, they're deep in their secret and they high hide from you when, but there are days when I go, oh my gosh. How much harder can I work? How much more can I do? How much more can I give? It's enough already. And then I throw that one away really as fast, fast as I can and come back out there and say, look, I need you and you need me and the only way we're going to do this is through energy. Okay? My energy to you and your energy back to me. You guys get that? I need your energy, and I know you need mine. I get it, okay? Totally get it. And that's a big part of why we put a lot of our stuff on YouTube. Look, you say you don't get enough of me. There are 846 YouTubes up there, okay? You'll get sick of me. <laughs> Go watch them. We're, we're, we're uh, streaming right now. We're streaming right now to agents to get that energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. You guys say to me, but Neil, you don't give me the secret answer, the, 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 the secret stuff, the good stuff. Do you guys not know why I videotaped these and I started videotaping them? Do you, you know why? I wanted to share this because I'm always sharing this with you, okay? You're always getting me. My children and my grandchildren weren't. I never figured how I was gonna get this to them, okay? So, if you think I'm holding something back and giving it to my kids and my grandkids that's different, think about why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for posterity to give to them. I'm giving it to them right now. There's nothing else. So they're get, do you guys get what I just said? There's no secret. There's no secret. They're getting this video. I hope they watch it. <laughs> and maybe they'll get sick of it too. But do you get what I'm saying? I'm not, there's not one thing I don't tell you, I don't tell them, I don't say, ah, go home. You know, I thought of this really great idea. You guys are going to make a bajillion dollars. Don't tell anybody. That's not me. You know it's not me. This is it. This is the amos. This is the truth. This is all there is. Okay? I'm telling right now my grandchildren. So you're getting it. The same message at the same time. If you choose to do something with it. Hard work helps you to face up to life. Life can be hard. We're challenged every day. Choose between whimpering and about the things that happen to us. I wrote down number three. Hard work makes us feel good. There is no greater feeling of satisfaction than completing a task and knowing that you did your best in the process. Completing and doing your best. Completing and doing your best. Completing and doing your best. When you write a list of things to do and they're task oriented, not sell a house because you can't con control that. Not take a listing because you can't really control that. But you can control how many people you talk to. You can control how many doors you knock on. You can control how many hours you work. You can control whether you learned a script or you didn't learn a script. You can control all that, right? Say yes. yes. You can totally control that. At the end of the day, when you write that list of things you want to accomplish today, that list of activities, and you complete that list of activities at the end of the day, how do you feel about yourself? Great, Great right? Awesome. Amazing. That's what we're talking about. Hard work makes us feel good. There's no greater feeling of satisfaction. 
None. I wrote down number four. Hard work builds character. Hard work builds character. There's not a better, better measure of who we are than our willingness to get off our tush and go out and work. Let me, uh, there is no better measure of who we are than our willingness to get off our tush and go out and work. Putting in an honest effort brings the best out in us. Right or wrong? Right. right. If you do your job, you feel great about yourself. The harder you work, the better you feel about yourself. The better you feel about yourself, the more production you tend to do.